You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul, and welcome to another friendly episode of Ask Drone You. Yes, friendly indeed. My name is Rob. Thank you guys for joining us for this episode number 821. So glad that you're with us today. Interesting question about some airspace issues. Definitely. Definitely some mm-hmm. interesting information about airspace issues today. We're going to be talking about uh, restricted areas, but wait, military restricted areas, but wait, our caller seems to have... Um, forgotten, which is okay because there's a lot of things about airspace. He seems to have forgotten about MOAs, military operating areas. So we're going to talk about what is restricted and what is an MOA and can I fly my drone in it? <clears throat> the answer actually may surprise you for the good of flying um, and for the good of you. So let's talk about that today. But before we do, I uh, just want to say thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for being a part of the community if you are. Um, we just launched three brand new courses inside of DroneU. If you want to check them out, they're free to members. So that's right. We have 32 classes for now, 47 bucks a month. You can take as many as you want or as little as you want. And we realize that time is valuable. So you can take as many classes literally as you want. That way your dollar goes further and you can help start up your drone business, master flight, or just really build the systems to turn your passion into profits. Check it out, DroneU.education. Absolutely. And speaking of systems, the guys over at SchedulDrone.com are putting together a great system to help you create a workflow for your business so that you can spend less time dealing with paperwork and more time working with your clients, getting new business, spending time flying, doing the things that you love. They've started early on with this process, focusing on those things that assist your clients with service requests through location-based information collection. They're working on refining that, perfecting that. Once that is finished, that's going to be a big piece of the puzzle that they're going to have all set up for you. If you want to check them out, you can do so with a 15-day trial by going to schedudrone.com. That's S-C-H-E-D-U-D-R-O-N-E.com. And if you use the coupon code DRONEU, all lowercase, you're going to get 25% off of the $20 monthly subscription cost if you choose to join them, which I think you will after you check them out. So schedudrone.com. If you are in restricted airspace, a military zone, and your home is located in that airspace, are you able to fly under the tree tops and stay within 10 to 15 feet below tree tops? Are you violating military restricted zone airspace? So that's actually one of the shorter questions that we get at 25 seconds. Appreciate the succinctness, but there's actually a lot going on in that question. There is a lot going on in that question because not all military operating areas are restricted airspace. In fact, if you look at a uh, (coughs) sectional map, you can go to skyvector.com, airnav.com, check it out. Sectional maps are uh, the quintessential airspace aviation maps. You really should not trust any electronic source until you go to Sky Vector. I mean... There are times I'm finding errors in in all mapping databases. So you really have to know your sectional maps. It can really give you more opportunity than the other pilots. So one thing that's important on sectional maps is that there are restricted areas uh, for operating or for military areas that are completely restricted. And if I remember correctly, they are showcased in a blue, let's see, military restricted airspace sectional map. I believe that they're blue hatch lines. Yep, here they are. All right, so military operating area are the magenta hatch lines. Now, can a drone pilot fly in a military operating area? See how it says Rainier MOA? Mm -hmm. Do you think a drone pilot can fly there? I would think in certain circumstances. Well, in all circumstances, you would be correct. Um, In fact, any, any drone pilot can fly in a military operating area you can always find more information on that military operating area in the uh, the key of the sectional map. Now, if it's a blue hashed area and it says restricted area, and it gives like a number like R6703 Delta, 
<coughs> that is a restricted area. If you want to get permission to fly in those areas, you can reach out to the military operating authority. And again, you can find that information in the sectional map. If it's not in the sectional map, you can go to the chart supplement of that particular area and get that information. Very cool. So the MOA, what's the significance of it then? Why pay attention to it? They're just saying like, hey, the military is known to operate here. There could be some training going on, some low flying birds. Uh, You know, a big MOA that you would know um, is in southern Colorado, just north of Trinidad on I-25. When you're driving north, have you ever seen some old phantoms fly by? Not like a phantom, like a DJI phantom, like an (laughs) actual phantom. An aircraft, Um, sure. An aircraft. Mm -hmm. The Thunderbirds, you can see them all the time. I'm forgetting the name of the Warthog. The Warthog Mm, is the aircraft you see there all the time. Gotcha. Um, So it's just be aware. Know that there's a decent possibility of planes being in the area. Now, let me ask you a question. If I'm a drone pilot and I see one of these military uh, aircraft coming my way, who has to yield to who? Well, I'm getting the heck out of the way. That's right. Drone pilot has yeah, to yield course. to manned aircraft. Let me ask you one more test question here for the part 107, Rob. Who has the ultimate responsibility for that drone flight? I do as the pilot. That's right. The remote pilot in command. For sure. Good answer. I like it. <laughs> you're ready. You're I'm ready. ready to pass the test. But if you're That's not it. ready to pass the test, don't forget we have three different classes for part 107. We just updated all of our questions. Um, even our study guide is updated. So check it out on the site, droneu.education, if you want to check that out. But to answer his question, he said he's in restricted airspace. He did. Which the chances of him actually being in restricted airspace uh and there being homes there, the chances are very low. He's probably in an MOA, a military operating area. So without knowing where he is, the best answer is you probably can fly because you're in an MOA. Restricted areas are, are, are typically found in areas where people cannot go anyway. So uh, White Sands Missile Range. Right. Perfect example. So let's just say by chance that it is, in fact, a restricted area for some strange reason. What are you thinking about his logic of I'm just not going to go above the treetops because a plane's not going to come knock the top of my trees off, right? <sighs> you know, you can get in a lot of trouble for flying in restricted airspace. I mean, let's... So just don't here's, do it. Here, here's how I look at it. I'm not going to give that answer. I'm not going to tell him do it or not do it. I'm going to give I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a situation. Okay. We're in our backyard. Okay. We fly our drone. He's in a restricted area, which, by the way, the chances of this are very low. Okay, <laughs> okay. just throw yeah, but just, for sake throw, of just throw this out there. Okay, he's in there. <laughs> he's flying in his backyard. He's got a neighbor with a couple dogs. He loses a prop because he struck the tree a couple weeks ago, and he never changed out his props after he hit the tree. So now his blade is unbalanced. He loses the blade, loses the drone. Drone hits the dog, kills the dog, has to be sent to the uh, veterinary ER because it's not dead quite yet. Hmm. And then it dies at the vet. Oh, that's sad. And now the homeowner next door is going to sue him, okay? But he's like, hold on, hold on. I've got renter's insurance with my drone, so I've got liability and it's going to cover this drone, Okay. But every insurance policy, when it comes to flying drones, as if you're flying, you you have to be following FAA regulations. And that if, if you're a hobbyist, that's part 101. If you're a commercial guy, that's that's part 107. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does his insurance claim get filled? Let's of course say, not. Exactly. Yep. He's he is. He's toast. Well, besides he is, that, he might be in bigger trouble because it would come out potentially in the lawsuit, et cetera, that he was flying in restricted airspace. Correct. So but, he could have bigger problems. Oh yeah. But I mean, like. If he were to go to court, he, and he would probably lose because you would just have to say you're in restricted airspace, FAA law, you should know the law, you know, sorry. Yeah. So it would hurt him you on lose. every case. The civil case, the criminal case, I'm not even sure there would be a criminal case, but he did kill a dog, so maybe. Um, civil and, anyways, for yeah. sure. Probably and not criminal. And then the FAA and NTSB coming in there and, you know... You, Bill's going to be nice. It's not Bill you got to be worried about. It's who comes after Bill. So. That's right. <laughs> so, there could be problems. So yes. in this very, very unlikely hypothetical, just don't fly. But most likely he's in an MOA and he's I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm guessing he's in an MOA. Now, a good example that um, uh, Hidden Lakes Ranch mm-hmm. did, that's in an MOA. Okay. 
So right outside of Trinidad. Yeah. Right outside. So you don't necessarily have to notify anybody either if you're in NMOA. Just no. pay attention. Pay attention, yield, demand, aircraft. So cool. Pretty simple. That's doable. Hope that helps you out today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload that question. We love stuff about business. We love stuff about mapping. Ask the hard questions. Ask the questions that you are embarrassed to ask. Why? Because the only way we grow is if we learn. So ask those questions. Go to askdroneu.com. For everyone else, thank you for supporting us, supporting the community at droneu.education. Thank you for listening. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Pablo. And my name is Rob. This is it. Like right now. (laughs) 